What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your man Chukubuikem Ogwa and today we're going to be talking about how to download Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 or Automatic 4 ones or Automatic 1111 but whatever we're here to talk about downloading the best most capable version of Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is an AI generation software that gives you the ability to create anything that comes out of your mind just straight from scratch. All you got to do is put in a prompt and you can get some really awesome really detailed videos and for those who are a little bit NSFW you can also get some uncensored content as well which I suppose is a plus to some people. Um, me personally I stay away from that but yeah yeah it is an option for you guys as well now stable diffusion can work for PCs and Macs but today's tutorial is all about Macs, specifically the Apple silicone m1 m2 m3 and whatever M series that are going to be coming out now it is a couple more steps than the PC version but it's still very doable and the first thing you're going to need is homebrew now just to give you a summarization of homebrew homebrew is what gives Macs the capability to use softwares that wouldn't normally be allowed on an Apple product and you're gonna need that so follow me okay so here we are at brew.sh which is the official homebrew website and all you're going to do is come here and you're going to click this copy button right here then what you're going to do is you're going to click the spotlight button which is usually f4 then you're going to click f4 and you're just going to type in terminal to get to uh the terminal for your mac once you're in there you're going to simply paste what you just got from homebrew right you see how that says now we're just going to click enter. It's going to ask you for the password to your Mac. You're just going to put that in. See, the script will install and you're going to click enter again. Now it is installing Homebrew onto my Mac. It's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, once it's done, it'll say complete and then we'll be on to the next step. So as you can see here, it says installation successful. So boom, we just up the score. And now that we've downloaded Homebrew, we're going to need to download a few other things like CMake, Python, Rust, Git, and a few other stuff that's going to help us make Stable Diffusion happen. Now, what's funny is that I took you to the actual Homebrew uh, website, but honestly, you could have gotten a lot of this done right here on StableDiffusionArt.com where it shows you how to actually install it. And this is a lot of where I was getting my information from. So then you would just come over to uh, automatic 111 and you see it walks you through this So you could have also gotten the homebrew terminal link right here But it's good to also still know what homebrew is But now we're here to install the packages into our terminal to also get the rest of what we need to make stable diffusion So it says brew install CMake protobuf uh, rust python 3.10 get wget now remember check this out if you already have this stuff that doesn't mean that you can't still run this because even if you run it, it'll just update it anyway. So it's good to run this even if you had it. And again, you could click copy or you could actually, you know, highlight the whole thing and copy. Either one is perfectly fine. And then you're just going to come down to terminal again. And then we're going to run this, run this right here. You press enter. Okay, wonderful. All things have now been installed. On to the next step. Now the next step is to git clone the automatic 1111 web UI uh, into your terminal. Now understand that this will be put into your home directory and you'll see one step once we do this but you know some people they may have wanted their stable diffusion on their desktop or their you know documents folder or maybe their applications folder. It's all depending but I think to keep this simple let's all just do the same thing. What we're going to do you're going to take this and then you're going to run it because what's going to happen is that git clone is literally going to go to git and for those who may not know what git is git is just short for github and github is a place where coders store all of their files and everything for people to take down and use share around and so on and so forth and stable diffusion is nothing more than just a github uh application software cloud thing whatever but it's just located on github so i guess that's a nice overview for those who don't know and so yeah like i said you're just going to git clone this you're going to take this 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 line right here copy it we're going to head back into the terminal and you're just going to paste that right there now i already have stable diffusion right i already have that folder so it already exists it's not an empty directory so it cannot do it again but just to show you how you would get there you're just going to go to finder and you're going to click command shift h okay once you click command shift h boom you'll see it right there stable diffusion web ui and then you're hooping now i'm going to switch this to like list so that we can see this a little bit better so boom as you can see you have all the stuff here that makes stable diffusion work now we are going to need a model but what the frick is a model we have to talk about what a model is a model is simply a template that stable diffusion will work with 
to base your prompts on. So for example, some people make models where every prompt that you give this model will turn it into, let's say, a dog, or every prompt that you give this model will make it look like a Disney character, right? That is basically what models are. They're nothing more than templates, and you need at least one template. Now, one of the best templates as of right now for just overall best image generation is the SDXL, which is just Stable Diffusion Extra Large, so that we can get some of the best images ready to go. So I'll show you how we download that. So what you really want to do is that you're going to go to the link right here. The link will be in the description. You're going to click Files and Versions, and then you're going to scroll down right here, and you're going to download SDXL Base 1.0 0.9 VAE Start Safe Tensors. So you're going to download that, and you're going to need a refiner, and the refiner just makes the SDXL even better. So you're just going to do that as well. And what you're going to do, you're going to come over here and you're going to click on files and versions. And you're going to do the exact same thing, VA VAE tensors, and you're going to download that as well. Then once you've downloaded it, all you're going to do, you're going to open up a couple file windows. And then once you download those models, what you're going to do, remember, you're just going to click command shift H, get back to your home directory. You're going to click on stable diffusion. Then you're going to go to models. Then you're going to click on stable diffusion and you're going to take these two bad boys and then you'll be able to drag and drop them both all the way over here which is perfect now that they're in there we'll be able to run the application now that we have some models in our application what you're going to do you're going to take this command right right here run automatic 1111 on mac you could just take this now no half well no half all it really means is when it gets to a certain point, do not half the quality. There's like reasons for that. I, I'm not going to get too much into it. It's kind of it's kind of a lot. I even took some time to learn it myself. It was a little tricky, but you don't have to worry about it. But you're just going to copy it. Now, you're going to go back into the Terminaso. And you're going to run this bad boy. Okay, so right here is where we ran into an installation problem. Now, if you did not run into this problem, you're free to go. And you can skip ahead to the number that I'm going to put on the screen right now. But if you were having problems or you got the same error, please watch these next steps because we do figure it out right now. Okay, so we ran into a bit of a problem, right? So this command, which should have worked, the, the command is not bad, it's just when we run this command, what happens is that it's supposed to open this thing up, but at first it wasn't opening it up for some reason. I kept getting these errors. Now it'll work because after doing some digging and some Google searching, Here's what the problem was. So basically what happened was starting around two hours ago, whenever this was posted, um, any new installation of WebUI will not be able to launch because you'll see the error that, you know, I was seeing here. Now, obviously it worked this now. It just worked now. But before I was getting this error right here, you see type error, async connection pool, got an ex unexpected keyword argument socket option. So I kept getting that error. Then what happened was, uh, it says right here, the issue is caused by an update to an external dependency on the HTTP. The version that works with, Web, with the WebUI is 0.24.1, but due to some external changes, the package automatically installed by WebUI is 0.25.1. So you need 24.1 actually. Now the fix is this, right? Now here were some commands that you could do. I didn't personally do these commands, but I'm sure those who know how to use commands very well could use this. But there was a very easy way that I liked a lot better, which was manually adjusting the web UI's requirements. So here's all that you had to do. What it was was that you're going to come back to Stable Diffusion. Remember, Command Shift -ho H, Command Shift H to get to Stable Diffusion Web UI. You're going to come here, and then you're going to go to the requirements dot requirements dash versions dot, dot text right you're going to join there now before we get into that here it was telling us what we needed to do all we had to do was add this right here httpx equal equal 0.24.1 to the bottom and launch the web ui successfully so now this is all that we had to do remember you open up this text file right here and then boom you saw i added this to the bottom right here it wasn't there before i had to add this now once it was added i was able to run the stable diffusion command and the link for this solution will be in the description below for you to learn a little bit more about this because there may be a time where you want to go back to the 25.0 and they'll show you how to do that in this as well so it's just a really great link like i said it'll be in the description below and it worked perfectly now i'm gonna do it one more time just so that you guys can see it happen live so right here again we're gonna copy this bad boy 
We're going to take it to the terminal and then we're going to press enter. And then once we're pressing enter, it'll run all the stuff like it was supposed to from the beginning. And then once it's run, boom, look at this baby. We are here in stable diffusion. Did not tell you I was going to get you through this. Listen, if you really appreciated the fact that I was able to get you through your error, before I was able to get you to download Stable Diffusion on an M1, M2, M3, whatever Apple Silicon Mac series, please you remember to like that button. Matter of fact, slap that like button and let me know how much you appreciate it. I really do appreciate this. It helps me take it to another level. Now, let's move on to the beauty of Stable Diffusion. So now we have Stable Diffusion, right? We have a dog. Really, we should type cute dog, if anything. Cute dog. And then now, remember, we have chosen the SDXL base. We're going to generate, and it's going to be pretty nice what we're going to get. And boom, we have a cute little dog. Now, for complete and utter transparency, Stable Diffusion on Mac is really not that good. See, there's not there's a lot of things that goes on with Stable Diffusion in the background that <clears throat> Mac doesn't do naturally. PC does. So when you try to do Stable Diffusion on Mac, you do run into a lot of problems, and you run into much longer loading times. Now, with that being said, the M2, the M3 will run Stable Diffusion faster. So you can expect that over time, Mac will be able to run Stable Diffusion pretty well. But as of right now, this infinite loading screen is going to be what you get. And it's not infinite. You just got to let it run. But it may be anywhere between 5 minutes all the way to 50. That cute dog I showed you, that took about 20 minutes to load up. But hey, still knowing how to download this will help. And if any of you are able to teach me how to make this run faster, please let me know in the comments below. That will be huge so I can make better videos for you guys. But as of right now, this is how you get Stable Diffusion on Mac. Funny enough, when it comes to Mac Stable Diffusion, you're actually going to be better off using Draw Things, Diffusers, or Diffusion B for Stable Diffusion on Mac. Since those apps are literally made for Mac and given to you from the App Store. And thank goodness your boy Chuckavelli made that video right here. So make sure to go click that and check that out because all those apps will use Stable Diffusion at a much faster speed with about the same level of accuracy and detail plus some customizations that will be available. So hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you for watching the video and have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe.